Hey witches! If you're looking for an ethical source for animal bones to use in your magic or crafting, consider this incredible gift from the natural world. Owl pellets. This is an owl pellet. Don't be grossed out. It's not owl poop. It's more like owl vomit. Better, right? It's actually really cool. Because owls don't have teeth, they usually eat their prey whole. When they make a meal of a mouse, for example, they take the nutrients they need from the soft tissues and fluids, but they can't break down the hard parts of the animal, such as the bones, teeth, and fur. Instead, about twice a night, they compress all those remains into hard pellets in their gizzard, and then they regurgitate them out through their beaks. It's not unusual to find whole bones and even skulls inside these pellets. I recently got 10 medium owl pellets from the Etsy shop Necessary Tools. The shop sells owl pellets from barn owls and great horned owls of the Pacific Northwest, as well as unique jewelry made from scavenged remains by Kristen Freestone. If you collect an owl pellet in the wild, it's a good idea to sterilize it by wrapping it in aluminum foil and baking it in a 325 degree oven for half an hour. The owl pellets I purchased have already been heat treated, but I still prefer to handle them with gloves. To dissect a pellet, simply start pulling it gently apart with your fingers. Be careful because the bones inside can be very small and fragile. If your pellet is too hard and you can't pull it apart, soak it in clean water for 10 minutes first. Here's the inside of a soaked pellet. See how much more easily it comes apart? It can be helpful to use tweezers to separate out the bones. These are such an incredible resource for bones. I never ever endorse harming any animals for magical practice. And it's important to me that any remains I use come from animals who died in the course of natural events. Unlike with animal remains that you might find on the ground, these remains have already been defleshed by the owl, so they are a lot easier to work with. But perhaps most importantly, because of their role in food chains and life cycles, these remains also contain extremely powerful energy and wisdom. The very process that creates these pellets can show us the importance of taking in the things that nourish us and help us grow and expelling the things that don't. In the book of Blood and Bones, Kate Fruler points out that owls can literally stomach anything, this can represent an ability to withstand, ingest, and learn from whatever life throws at you, no matter how unpalatable. And in The Hidden Lives of Owls, Lee Calvez writes, it is said that the wisdom of owls comes from their ability to discern what is useful while discarding the rest. Once a pellet is fully formed, the owl has to expel it before they can take in new food. They must let go of the parts that are not serving them to make space for what they need to survive. Consider if there's something in your life that you would be better off releasing. Because these pellets were once part of the owl, I believe they contain additional owl lessons. Owls are often depicted as teachers or keepers of knowledge in popular culture. It's no wonder that we might think they have something to teach us, as owls have been on this planet for over 67 million years, while Homo sapiens, humans, have only been here roughly 300,000 years. There are over 250 species of owls and they have a wide range of specialized adaptations. But generally speaking, owls are precisely engineered killing machines. Most owls have eyes that see exceptionally well in the dark so they can hunt at night. But in a way, they also see with their ears. Many species of owl have asymmetrical ears. This causes sound to hit each ear at a slightly different time which gives them a greater ability to pinpoint exactly where their prey is. The owl teaches us to look beyond what most others see, to listen, and to pierce through the darkness. Owls also have near silent flight, and their feet are uniquely shaped with two front-facing and two backwards-facing talons that can firmly grip their prey. But despite all of these predator gifts, they still only catch their prey about one out of every four or five times they dive for it. This can remind us that survival takes a combination of both our innate natural gifts and perseverance. While there are so many powerful lessons to gain from the role of the owl in creating these pellets, do not ignore the lessons of the prey animals. These are the animals whose remains you are unearthing. You can certainly explore the gifts of the individual species of rodents and birds whose bones you are able to identify, but I think the most powerful lesson bestowed by the prey is about the way that all creatures are interconnected. Sometimes your purpose in this lifetime is not to survive or thrive, but to nurture another life form. I'm not encouraging you to become food. That's probably not your purpose. But I am asking you to think about the necessary things you can accomplish through sacrifice. 
In the case of the prey animal, its goals are to survive and reproduce. The fact that it fails at surviving and is eaten does not mean that its life was wasted. No, it became an important part of the owl's story of trying to survive and reproduce. The lesson here could be, not everything is about you. And even if you're uncomfortable, maybe you are playing the exact role you need to play to help others. Also, don't forget that before this prey animal found itself in an owl's digestive tract, it lived a life with a range of experiences. This reminds us that we are more complex than our worst traumas. Once you have dissected your owl pellets, you will probably want to clean your bones. You can incorporate cleansing into a ritual practice by using charged or blessed water if you choose. Add some warm water and Dawn dish soap to a jar. Shake it up and add your bones. If your bones are like mine, the water is going to get disgustingly dirty right away. This is kind of satisfying to look at and makes me feel like a mad scientist. Let your bones soak for 24 hours. I separate my bones into three jars, miscellaneous body bones, general skulls, and one special skull that got its own jar because it's the biggest and most complete. During the cleaning process, most of the teeth in the skulls and jawbone pieces will fall out. If you plan to reattach teeth or jawbones to the skull, your best bet is to save everything you have and clean it separately so it doesn't get mixed in with all the other skull parts. After about 24 hours, strain the dirty water out of the jars. I dump the water from each jar into a small tea strainer and catch all the grime and fur so it doesn't go down the drain. Then I add more water to the jar to pour out the bones. When that doesn't really work, I end up just scooping the bones out of the jar by hand so that I can rinse the soapy bones and the jar. Then I repeat the cleaning process I did the day before by refilling my jars with warm water and Dawn dish soap and adding the bones back in. After changing the water and giving everything a gentle shake, it already looks much cleaner. If your water is still filthy the second time, repeat this process until it's fairly clear. After two days of sitting in water and dish soap, my bones look pretty clean. So on day three, I'm ready for the next step whitening the bones. This step is of course optional. Drain and rinse your bones in your jar and make a new solution with about 50% water and 50% hydrogen peroxide. You can leave the bones in this solution for up to 48 hours. I see a big difference after just a few hours, but I leave my bones in the hydrogen peroxide solution overnight. The next morning, I rinse my bones in the strainer again and spread them out to dry. After they air dry, you'll be able to see how white your bones have become. If you want them even whiter, soak them in diluted hydrogen peroxide again. I don't recommend using any bleach to whiten your bones because it can make them weak and brittle. Out of the 10 pellets I dissected, two were mostly fur, but best I can tell, inside the other eight, there were numerous rodent skulls and bones. I just love looking at all of these harvested bones. They are tiny treasures. The skulls are so light, they almost feel like paper. There are so many things you can do with your clean bones. You can create a bone throwing oracle, incorporate them into jewelry pieces, adorn your ritual tools with them, grind them into bone dust for spell work, or simply set them on your altar as a vessel to connect with spirit and meditate on the life cycle. They can also represent the earth element on your altar. If you plan to dedicate these bones to magical workings, you may choose to do a ritual to introduce them into your practice. Depending on how you experience the energy of the bones, a ritual can help you open up a relationship with the spiritual entities within them. When I say spirit in this video, I'm not talking about ghosts. I'm coming from an animist perspective, that there is a conscious energy or life force in everything around us. I engaged in ritual before dissecting my owl pellets. I placed them inside my copper cauldron on my altar for several days as a gesture to the transformation they were about to undergo. 
I repeated words of gratitude over the pellets. I honor and give thanks to Mother Nature for all her incredible gifts. I honor and give thanks to the mighty spirits of the owls who created these pellets. I honor and give thanks to the small creatures who gave their lives to feed the owls. I also made a land acknowledgement statement to the indigenous peoples upon whose land these owl pellets were collected. I acknowledge and honor the Cayuse, Umatilla, Walla Walla, Kalapuya, Atfalati, the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, and the Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians, and any other indigenous peoples upon whose sovereign ancestral homelands these owl pellets were collected. I condemn the violent theft of those lands. I give thanks for the indigenous people's stewardship over thousands of years. I also wish to recognize and honor all of the indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home and thank them for their ongoing conservation work. I can't know exactly where these pellets were harvested, but I reached out to Kristen of Necessary Tools and she was gracious enough to tell me that the owl pellets she collects come from Southern Oregon, including Oregon City and from Northern California. I use the interactive map at www.native-land.ca to determine which tribes lived or live on land in those areas, focusing especially on Oregon City because it was the most specific place I had to go on. Depending on how much you know about where your owl pellets were collected, you can even put a zip code into the map. If you're going to include a land acknowledgement statement in your ritual, I urge you to put some work in both reflecting on why you're doing it and learning about the history of the people you're acknowledging because it's the respectful thing to do. Personally, I think it's a powerful reminder that colonialism is ongoing and harmful. It also makes me feel more connected to the history of the land. And I believe that history is tied to the energy of everything that comes from the land. As part of my ritual, I also leave offerings on my altar. I place a small bowl of water and a small bowl of seeds, including ground flax seeds, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds. Please quench your spiritual thirst with this water and sate your spiritual hunger with these seeds. May these offerings be multiplied and transformed into whatever form would be most pleasing. These offerings are symbolic gestures of respect and good hospitality. I chose seeds because I expect these bones to come from small rodents and birds and seeds are a big part of their diet in the wild but I ask that the offering be transformed into a pleasing form in case something else would be more desirable. Finally, I extend an invitation to the spirit in the bones to work with me. Welcome, benevolent animal spirits. I mean you no harm. I'm dissecting these owl pellets for the purpose of incorporating their bones into future magical workings. I invite the spirits of the owls and the prey to consider me a friend and to be a co-creator in the magical workings I do with these bones. I humbly ask that you bless me with your energy and your wisdom and remind me that we are all interconnected. Thank you. The more you talk and handle your bones, the more connected you will feel with them. Have you had experience working with animal bones in your practice? Let me know in the comments. Be well and be witchcrafting.